It's right there in front of us. We just, you know, we take it. What would you think about that? Oh, yeah. What's going on, fam? It's your man, VKJ. And yes, I'm back with another video. This is for We Own This City on HBO. This is the episode three recap. And yeah, this one was very interesting as we now go a little bit deeper to see exactly what's going on with Detective Souter and his involvement with Jenkins. And yeah, we're going to break down a whole lot of other things. So definitely before we get started, make sure you check out all my episode recaps, episode one and two, as far as the recaps. And now let's break down episode three recap of We Own This City. All right. So we first start off now in episode three with Sergeant Thomas Allers. And he's under investigation. He's talking to his lawyer. And the lawyer's telling him, man, they got you under racketeering and stealing $10,000. And the lawyer, of course, wants to know exactly what's going on. He wants to know the story so he knows how to defend him and knows how to negotiate whichever way possible. So Tom, Sergeant Tom, we call him Sergeant Tom. We're going to start off with his story here, talking about how they robbed this young man and how they ran up on him and yeah they got a tip from who mondo right g money and g money he found out that this guy has some money and has some straps in his house so they see him leave and they're making a whole bunch of jokes and they decide to follow him and pull him over so they go and chase after him right meanwhile we have FBI agents Erica and John and they're talking to a judge and they're just trying to get some documentation done and they're telling him how yeah, there's been a lot of things that they've been finding and the judge is telling them yeah it may be a difficult time but whatever they need he's going to be there to help them out meanwhile we got the guys and they pulled over the young man throwing out diapers and car seats on the floor and you know they're you know, Jamel is saying, listen, man, just let us know where the strap is. And he's like, I don't got a strap. There's no strap in there, man. Just let me go. And he's playing the bad cop. And here comes Tom playing the good cop. You know, they play that good cop, bad cop thing just so they can get information. He's like, listen, just let me know where the strap is. And then we'll, you know, leave you about your way. But, you know, I can't help you if you don't try to help yourself. So he's trying to be a good cop. It's like, listen, we're going to take you back to the house and find out exactly what's going on. Now we got the captain, Davis, and he's talking to, of course, Nicole Steele of the DOJ. And he's like, how are things going? Are people cooperating? She's like, yeah, to a certain extent, they're talking to me, but they're giving me a hard time. And, you know, they're telling me how, you know, I wouldn't know what policing is like in Baltimore, you know, maybe someplace else, but not Baltimore. And he's like, yeah, can you blame them? There's a lot going on and she's just trying to get down to the bottom of this corruption but he's doing his best to try to keep the corruption out of the department obviously he's not doing a good job at all and she is really not feeling how she's being treated but captain davis is just on some like hey you know what continue to ask questions but you're only gonna get but so far but she's not gonna give up meanwhile the guys go back and take this young man back to his house and they're searching his house for the straps and some money, of course. And that's their whole point. They're not trying to really take the straps off the street. So they bring him back to the house handcuffed with his baby girls and his wife there. And, you know, it's really embarrassing. And, and she's just like, what is going on? She's looking at him. He's like, don't say anything. Don't say anything. So they find one strap in the bedroom. And then Gandu, he finds another strap hidden. Uh, in another part of the bed. So, of course, they're celebrating like, yeah, we're finding straps, but they're really, really looking for money. They're really looking for all the money that this guy may have it's just so they can steal and keep it for themselves. So, of course, Tom is like, listen, take the straps downstairs, show him what's going on because he found money himself and now he's putting that money into his, you know, vest, right? Putting it in his vest, hiding it from everybody, Herschel comes in and is like, yo, did you find anything? Did you see anything? Because he's looking for money too. He's like, nah, nah, go downstairs. 
So Tom takes the rest of the money and he puts it in his vest and he's like, yeah, nothing up here. Right. So he takes all the money and doesn't tell him he has all the stash and has all the money goes downstairs and says there's nothing here. So that's when he is telling his lawyer that that's how he stole the ten thousand dollars from that young man. Right. So now we're in the car. These guys are getting something to eat. They're making jokes. You know, they're talking about this, that, and the third. And Gandu's on the phone with his girl. And he's like, all right, what you guys want to eat? And meanwhile, you know, Jamel is trying to do a report. And he's like, hey, listen, you know, what do I put down as far as what we found as far as money? Do I put down zero or what do I put down? Right? He's asking Tom. And Tom is like, man, you already know, man. Like, put down zero because we didn't find anything, man. If I did find anything, you know, I share it, right? And yeah, Gandu and and Jamel looking at each other like, yeah, right, right. So, you know, they don't believe him, but they're going to put down whatever the sergeant is telling them to put down, even though the sergeant stole the money and didn't share it with them. So now we see Erica and she's listening on Gandu's conversation. They have a wiretap on his conversation. So, you know, they're trying to listen in. He's talking to his girlfriend and everything, but there's nothing pertinent. So we know that the FBI has now tapped Gandu's phone right his cell phone so meanwhile we see jenkins and captain fries or sergeant fries and they find a stash and they're like all right good job good job your boy jenkins gets a phone call from his girl his wife talking about yeah you know the contract of this contract today he's like all right i'm gonna be right there so he's telling his sergeant hey listen i gotta go take care of my wife he's like what i don't care about your wife man get over here and bag this up we gotta do this and that so instead of going to his wife's aid he's gonna basically follow his sergeant's orders he's waiting in line to you know hand in all the evidence or whatever you know he's joking and busting the balls of another cop or whatever and they're like yeah you plain clothes think that you guys are all of that so you know there's a little discrepancy between guys who are in suits and guys who don't wear anything right who are in plain clothes so the sergeant comes in there go to the front of the line you know put that out and then i'll take care of the rest and you know it really there's a whole beef between, again, guys that got suits on the street and, you know, guys like Jenkins, who's part of a special task force. Right. So now we see Suter. Right. And Suter sees an OG cop. He's like, oh, what's going on? Yeah. You know, I'm doing an investigation on this shooting that went down. He's like, yeah, you know, there's another cop that was on the beat as well. Definitely go check him out and he's going to be able to help you out. Yeah, I'm going to be retiring real soon. So, you know, there's a little respect that Suda has for this gentleman right here as he, he's about to retire real soon. So he gives him a handshake and then he goes outside to talk to this other officer. The other officer seems to be, you know, real good officer. He says, yeah, you know, I did some investigating myself, but I didn't get anywhere and nobody wants to talk to me or whatever. But I can take you down and you know, I don't mind doing a little extra paperwork, you know, so we can solve this case. So he looks like he wants to definitely do the right thing solve the case and yeah suit is definitely impressed he's like yo respect man respect so he's like yo nobody gave me anything but i can take you down to the scene and we can go down there together and i'm open to doing all of that so you know suda definitely is like looking at this young cop like yo he's a good dude so now we see nicole still she goes to a poetry reading she sees this young man who's speaking on you know pretty much the brutality the police brutality that's going on in baltimore and he's breaking a lot of things down so she sits down with him because obviously he knows what's going on he's obviously experienced some things with the cops so she's just digging a little bit deeper just to see what's going on and he's like yeah i've been doing this for a long time and a lot of stuff's been going down for a long time that's really you know injustice and everything and she's just there to kind of get a little deeper and he's like, yeah, you know, there's a whole lot going on with the corruption of these cops. He's like, I don't know specifically some of these cops, but I know what they've been doing and what has been done to me. And he's like, listen, man, you know, dirty water is not going to clean up this place. And she's like, well, dirty water uh, definitely can put out a fire. <laughs> right. So they're going back and forth on some poetry level. And he's just like, yo, that dirty water can't put out the fire in the in this city right here in this city right here. Yeah, that dirty water is not going to definitely it's not going to help at all with the corruption that's going down in this city. So it gets pretty deep with this gentleman and this conversation. So now we see Jenkins. He's riding with his partner and he sees this guy on a stoop. They're just 
hanging out, drinking a little bit or whatever. He rolls over to him like, hey, listen, we're trying to clean up. I'm going to need you guys to go back inside. He's like, yo, this is my stoop. I own this place. I'm not going anywhere. You know what I'm saying? He's like, listen, don't give us a problem. Just go back inside. We appreciate it. So he gives him the head nod, right? They don't go back inside. Jenkins is like, yo, roll around. So they roll back around. They throw on the lights. And here comes Jenkins harassing these guys. They were doing nothing, sitting on the stoop. He's like, yo, go back inside. I told you to go back inside. Try to give you a chance. He's like, yo, man, this is my, this is my house. Jenkins grabs him, throws him on the ground, and starts beating him, man. Like, really beating him bad. I mean, like, really bad. And his brother is standing there like, yo, what are you doing? That's messed up. That's messed up. Next day, Jenkins goes into, you know, Sergeant Fry's office. And he's like, yo, what's going on? He's like, have a seat. He's like, yo, man, you know, you, you really messed up. You really messed up, you know, harassing this guy. He had to go to the hospital and get stitches. You know, the, the other guy's like, hey, listen, man, you could lose your job over this. And they look at it and Jenkins like, well, maybe I did, you know, mess up. And, and maybe I did do a little bit too much, you know, da, 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 da. And they're looking at him and they start laughing because there's they're busting his chops because they're not going to do anything. He's not going to lose his job because he busted this guy up and harassed him for nothing. And Sergeant Fries is on some like, listen, man, you just got to be more careful. We are always going to protect our own. You always bring in, you know, the good stuff, but you got to get make sure your paperwork is right. So now we see that the corruption is not just on a level where the cops are on it on the beat the sergeants are corrupt the captains are corrupt all of them are corrupt protecting each other from harassing people on the street they're going to make sure that nobody goes down you know for some bs that they're doing so he's like all right all right captain you got me there so now we see erica she's a flautist and she's practicing and she's still listening to gandu's conversation right so he's talking he's talking to this girl and this girl is tipping him off about some dude that is on the street right so she's listening in and yeah she's getting all the good stuff meanwhile she's trying to call you know fbi agent her other fbi partner and he's eating mcdonald's she's like where are you are you on the east side you'll go over there because gandu and all of them they have a, a weird conversation right now and he's talking to some girl so they're on the top of it, they're on top of the case, and they're trying to get as much as they can. So we see Gandu, he's talking to some girl, and the girl is telling him to pull this guy over because he has a strap in there, and he also has money in there. And you know that's what they're out for, right? They're out to not just get guns, but to get as much money and cash as they can. So they pull this guy over. He's not even from, you know, Baltimore. He's from outside of Baltimore, and yet, the girl is telling Gandu, yeah, look in his jacket. And he's like, he doesn't have a jacket on. He got a shirt on. He's, got, he's like, oh, his jacket is in the trunk. He's like, you sure? And this girl is tipping him off because he, you know, obviously the guy goes down there to buy some product. And she sees what he's doing and sees that he has some money going on. So he, they're getting the tip from this girl. Herschel goes to the back and he finds the strap in the back of the trunk. And yeah, Gandu is like, you know, at first he didn't believe her, but yeah, they find a strap and he pulls out the strap. He's like, yeah, we got it. We got it. But before that, Jamel took some money out of the guy's pockets. So they're out to just get as much money and straps off the street and into their pockets, right? Of course, the girl is like, man, you <laughs> calls him a name. And yeah, your girl Erica is like, wow. You see what's going down. We're going to keep all this information. We're going to keep it all. So now we see Detective Suter and a young man. They see a young lady walk across the street. So Suter runs over to her and she's going into her house. He's like, hey, do you live here? You know, uh, do you know anything about the shooting that was going on? She's like, listen, I don't know anything. You know, this is my boyfriend's house. And I stay there. He's like, listen, if you know anything, definitely here's my card. And yeah, we're going to see more of her because she definitely knows something and he has a feeling that she knows what's going on because she lives on in that building and that house where the shooting happened. So now they see the OG lady. She's there. She's like, yeah, I've been here for years and I see what's going on. He's like, you know, I see, you know, what you're doing here and we respect you. And they show respect to her, but they're really trying to see if she knows anything as far as that shooting goes. 
And, you know, she knows everybody on the block because she's been there since the beginning. But she tells him that, yeah, you know, my neighbor has, you know, this nephew and he's really terrible. And that's all I'm going to say. Right. That's all I'm going to say. So now we have Steele and we have Brady and this other gentleman right here. And, you know, they're part of the union. You know, they're heading up the union and everything. And she's really trying to get down to the real reason why these guys have so many complaints but they're still on the streets and why, you know, arrests are down right now. And they're pretty much telling her that arrests are down because the cops don't want to arrest anybody. They don't want to get a lawsuit for doing their job. So they're not doing their job. And these other guys, the strap task force, they're pretty much stealing money and straps, right? That's what they're doing. They're really stealing money. So we see Jenkins and he goes to his boys club, right? His gentleman's club. And he's up in there trying to have a good time. I mean, we see all sides of Jenkins, right? Yeah, he has his wife. Yeah, he's, you know, running with the strap task force. But he's also in the streets messing around with these ladies as well. So we see in that Jenkins, he is just an all around douchebag for real. <laughs> like, you know, for lack of a better word, he's just doing whatever he wants to do. But yet he has a wife at home and he's stealing money from people. So we see how corrupt he is. And now still is talking to, you know, her boss and she's like, what's going on? What's happening? She's like, yeah, these guys are giving me a hard time, but I'm not going to give up. You know, she's really, really being diligent about getting more information to take these guys down. So Suter, he gets some information as to what went down. And yeah, he's excited about it. So he sees the young lady again and he's like, hey, listen, you know, you know something and you better tell me what's going on. You know, tell me where your boyfriend's at, you know, or you know what? Let me take you down to the stage. He's like, no, 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 no. I just want to go. He's like, listen, call him right now because he's a suspect in this murder. So call him now and have him come here right now. Or we're going to take you in for, you know, aiding and abetting. So now we see Erica and John and they're going to talk to the young lady who the guy stole the ten thousand dollars from right who tom stole that ten thousand dollars right then we shoot back to suitor she calls her boyfriend they take him in because he's a suspect and everything and it seems to be a good day he's thanking the young cop for helping him out and suitor seems to be happy and the lady she's smiling at suitor like okay you did take him off the street and the young man the young cop is like man she seems like she likes you right <laughs> so it seems to be a good day Suda goes home to his wife and she's like, how was your day? He's like, yeah, it was a good day. You know, definitely, you know, we got a guy, you know, who is a suspect off the street and he's feeling really, really good about, you know, his work that he got done today. And she's like, oh, that's different. OK, uh, I'm proud of you in the whole nine. Right. So now we shoot back to the cell present day. We see Jenkins. He's in there and he's reminiscing about everything. He's thinking about every crazy, corrupt thing that he's done and how we got these guys involved. So now he's reminiscent of being in a bar and we see Suter, before he became Detective Suter, come up in there. Obviously, they were all down with each other. You know, they're all cool and you know they're having drinks or whatever. And Suter's like, listen, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. I'll be back, I'm gonna get you around. So Jenkins is talking to his boy and he's like, yo, what do you think about Suter? You know what I'm saying? He seems to be a pretty good dude, you know, or whatever, whatever. Maybe he could be down with our task force. So then we shoot and we see that, yeah, now Suter is down with Jenkins. So they put Suter down with the task force and they're about to go and get all up in this guy's business right here. So they're about to go in because, again, they think there's straps in there, there's money in there, there's product in there. So they're getting ready to go and Suter's right there with Jenkins and the crew. And they run up in the spot, tell everybody to get on the ground. And yeah, here we go. This is where Jenkins talks to this guy, Conley. And so he's like, listen, we can make this easy, man. I don't want to tear this place up. Just let me know where the straps are and the money is. And he's not saying anything. He's like, yo, do whatever you need to do, Jenkins. And they know each other, right? He knows who Jenkins is. So Jenkins proceeds to be like, yo, listen, I'm going to give you another chance, man. I don't want to tear this place up, right? He's trying to give him another chance, but he says, do whatever you got to do. So Jenkins starts tearing the place up. 
ripping things apart, throwing things down. This guy, he's not saying a word. He's just like, yo, whatever, you're not gonna find my stash. But we see Souter, before he became a detective, he notices this table is not a regular table, right? So he had some detective skills back then. Meanwhile, your boy Jenkins is taking TVs off the wall. He's crushing them and stomping on them. And Souter's like, yo, listen, yo, this table right here is not a normal table. So Jenkins goes over with Souter and they flip this table over and yeah, this was definitely where the stash was, where all the straps are, the money and the product is in the bottom of this table. And yeah, your boy Suter does his detective work way before he becomes a detective. So he already has the skills. Yeah, Jenkins is excited. They're like, man, you did your thing, man. That's good. That's good police work. That's good police work. Bigging him up for finding this and finding that. Meanwhile, the rest of the guys take everybody out front and Jenkins is like yo man it's like forty thousand dollars right there da, da, da. and he's like yo you know you want this money and suit is like yo yo man I don't know I don't know I don't, I don't you know I'm not trying to do it he's like all right well you know what I'm gonna do what I gotta do so Jenkins takes the money but Souter he doesn't take anything but he's watching and seeing what's going on so now we shoot back to Tom with the FBI and Tom is like yo I didn't do anything wrong at all you know what I'm saying yeah I took a little bit of money but I didn't do anything wrong. And, you know, Detective uh, John, FBI John, he's like, hey, listen, yeah, you did. Remember that guy that you stole from? Well, that $10,000, he owed his supplier. And being that he owed his supplier, yeah, the supplier, you know, that's a no-no on the street. So they go after him and they basically shoot him down in cold blood in the middle of the day because he didn't give the 10000 to his supplier. The guy shoots him, drives off, and the whole nine. So now we see your boy Tom and FBI John just like, see, you did hurt somebody. At the end of the day, you stealing that money, got somebody killed. So the lawyer's like, listen, let me confer with my client. And they walk out, and Tom is like, yo, man, F you, right? He's mad. So now we see Jenkins, and he's talking to Suter. He's like, yeah, man, there was some good work today, man. You did your thing. You know, you should be a detective one day. He's like, yeah, that was some good stuff, man. He's like, yeah, we got about 40000 And he puts the stack down in the middle of the console with Suter. And Suter's like, yo. He's like, yo, what's this? He's like, yo, you deserve it, man. Like, you know what I mean? Like, those little paychecks that we get from the police department ain't doing nothing, man. He's like, yo, this is yours. He's like, I don't know, I don't know. You know, Suda's like, I don't know. He's looking at the money. He's like, yo, that's a lot. He's like, yeah. So now Jenkins is trying to see if he is going to come to the dark side and take the money and be down with Jenkins and their task force. Will Suda take the money? We shall see in the next episode of We Own This City. What do you guys think? You guys think that Suda's going to take the money? That he's going to get down with the corrupt cops. That he's going to become corrupt himself. We're going to see. I don't know. I don't think so. But he did see everything that was going on. And that may get Suter into trouble. So again, this is We Own The City Episode 3 Recap. Guys, drop your comments below. Let me know what you think about this episode right here. And again, as we continue on, I appreciate you all for watching. If you're brand new to the channel, please go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Do me a favor, smash that like button. And absolutely, if you thought this video was crazy, definitely check out this next one. Appreciate you all. Salute.